Now, help for Libyan rebels from the CIA. President Obama reportedly signing off on this. Sources say CIA operatives are on the ground in Libya and in contact with the opposition. And joining us to talk more about the CIA's possible role in Libya from Washington, former CIA counterterrorism analyst Michael Scheuer. Michael, thanks for being with us this morning. You're welcome. So there are reports out, again, that the CIA is on the ground in Libya, uh, contacting and vetting the rebels. Is this setting the stage to arm them? I, I don't think there's any other uh, possible reason for it. And, and uh, the president clearly has sent the agency in to find out who he is supporting and to see what kind of material, uh, human material, we would have to work with if we decided to, if the president decided to arm and train these people over the longer term. Yeah, and you're concerned about this prospect. You think it could become another Taliban situation for the U.S. What, in your mind, is the worst case scenario here? Well, uh, Libya has been very strong in sending young men or having its young men go overseas to fight in Islamic insurgencies in the Balkans, in Chechnya, Afghanistan, especially Iraq, when the, the height of the fighting was there. Those that don't get killed, of course, go home. And I think the core of the resistance, whatever little military, military ability they have, is probably made up by people we, elsewhere we would call Mujahideen. And so it's a, it's a dicey proposition to be getting involved with this. I'm not sure that uh, the opposition, if it takes power, is going to be much better than was Gaddafi. But that's why you need to have the CIA, I presume, in there vetting, as we said, who, who are these people, who are the elements that are funding them or supporting them, who are the, the politically the most, uh, the most palatable and the least palatable among them. The White House saying that no decision has been made. I have a question for you as a, as a CIA veteran, I guess. I mean, the fact that we even know about this, is that, is that unusual? I mean, should we just assume that the CIA in this sort of a situation would, of course, be in there on the ground? Well, it, it, you have to assume that the president wants the best information that he can get. And if he wants to have that information, he has to have somebody on the ground. And so, yes, I think you assume wherever there's trouble, you'll find the agency. Uh, the other point I would make here is that vetting the people who are in the opposition of course is only uh, you're only able to do that to the extent that they're willing to talk to you I think the agency will find a lot of people who are pro-democracy and and westernized happy to talk to them the the more Islamic oriented people aren't going to talk to them because that would bring into question our air support for them so uh, it, this is a this is a mission that's a very difficult one and the chances of success are really uh, probably not better than 50-50. What's the alternative? Um, if we don't arm the rebels, and they're clearly outmanned and outgunned by uh, Qaddafi's forces, um, what's the better solution here? The better solution was, as Mr. Paul said, never go at all. This was none of our business. But I think what we're seeing is the string is playing out. We threatened Qaddafi, and that didn't work. There's an arms embargo and an economic embargo. That didn't work. There was a UN resolution, and that didn't work. Aerial bombing has continued and has impact, but it hasn't defeated him. Now we're at the stage where we're going to try to ar apparently try to train and arm the resistance. That takes a long time. I don't know if we have that time against Gaddafi. What, what we're seeing is the president being put, putting himself into a corner where his only option is ground troops. But that's something that is not, that's not something that no one says that they want to do in this administration. I mean, they, they simply don't want to do that. They want to... Well, they don't. Well, the, the, the choice may come down to admitting that it was a mistake and being defeated in the sense that Gaddafi survives or putting ground troops in. Nations are a lot like people. They don't like making, uh, admitting to mistakes. And uh, maybe they don't want to put them in. But when it comes down to looking defeat in the face, I wonder. You know, you led the CIA's unit that tracked Osama bin Laden 1996 to 1999, and, and you believe that, uh, much like that situation, America's involvement in Libya could prove to be a recruiting tool for extremists. Why? Oh, oh it's absolutely a recruiting tool. It's, it's the American-led West attacking a Muslim country that has oil. They've been oil. very careful to say it's not the American-led West, that NATO has now fully taken over the operations. Um, uh, well, that may fool... Firepower was used in the beginning, but that this is uh, a coalition that includes Arab states. That may fool some Americans. Uh, it's not going to fool the people who sympathize with bin Laden and other Islamists. This is really a U.S.-led operation. And you talk about the Arab states that are involved. The Arab states are tyrannies that are hated by their own people. This is, a, this is a piece of theater set up by Mrs. Clinton and Mrs. Mr. McCain and the, the bipartisan group that loves to intervene abroad. 
In the Muslim world, this is Americans killing Muslims again, and it looks like it's for oil. I, I'm, I just want to ask, are you trying to have it both ways and saying that, okay, these are tyrannies that hate their own people? Well, that's why we're helping, because in Libya, it was the people that wanted Gaddafi out, that they were tired of it. So weren't we then supporting uh, Islamic democracy, I guess you could say, in these countries where they're tired of totalitarian rule? If we were supporting Islamic democracy, that would be one thing. But if you listen to Mrs. Clinton and especially the rather crazed Ms. Rice at the UN, this is all about democracy in a world where, where democracy is not going to take hold. I think it's very clear, Michael Scheuer, that you are no fan of this policy and this administration. I, I think calling uh, Ambassador Rice crazed is, is certainly a, 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 a significant charge. Um, well, I don't know. I've just listened to her. You know, that's only my impression. And I have to say, this is not a Democratic problem. This is a Republican problem, too. Both parties love to intervene in other people's business where there are no U.S. interests at stake and where we spend enormous amounts of money at a time when we're nearly bankrupt. That doesn't seem to me to be a wise practice of American and statesmanship. That's, and that's a whole other story. That it, we, it, it, to call the United States bankrupt, the United States is running humongous deficits, yes, but the economy and this mission in Libya are two separate issues. They're not separate issues, ma'am. You're just carrying the water for Mr. Obama. I'm certainly not carrying anyone's water, and, and, that, and I, I will assure you of that. Michael Scheuer, thank you so much for your time. Um, we, you know, we've had a very long, exhaustive interview. You had plenty of time to give your point of view on that. Uh, we're going to be right back. It's 38 minutes past. Thanks, thank Michael. You.